<laughs> Two guys at pizza place and a podcast? All right, cool. <laughs> I was going to say, man, our, our podcast is way whitewashed in comparison. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it, 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 like, yeah, that, that, that happens. But our biggest thing was we were – if we're representations and through college, all our professors kept saying, you know, you guys are going to save the world and you guys are going to be the future of media. Okay, if we are that – and we can't depend on y'all for a leg up or a head up because you still see us as competition because you still have an old mindset that we can't carry into the next 30 years of our lives because it may not necessarily Projecting. not work. A little bit, but... This part, <laughs> a little bit. But you felt this way at one point, and you still kind of do. I'm just talking I mean, about I that I don't aspect. like old people. I, no, I agree with that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not saying all this is concrete like... Down to the letter, but I'm just uh, saying uh, it fits I, in. The point is, I don't in. know what you're saying. Continue. I mean, fine. The point was, <laughs> I, I was saying, shut up. The point was that I'm saying is like we had like a vision and goal for what we wanted, and we also were looking at the terrain in front of us, and it's like, okay, there's a bunch of tools. Is Kenny of- mansplaining me right now? No, I'm not. <laughs> Are you regurgitating what I just said? Nah, I was giving like a. A sounds, layered sounds like answer. Every communications course at CSUN. I was giving you a. I was giving a layered answer that he didn't touch on. How dare you accuse me of mansplaining? Go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Unbelievable. Me mansplaining? I, I feel. Yeah, I'm kind of offended. I feel gaslit right now. How dare you? Gaslit. <laughs> but nah. Um, because we have fire takes. Probably just the in- indigestion. No, actually, the the smoothies I've been drinking have been cleaning that up. And also, I, I have about 10 ounces of fucking ginger over there in that bottle. I'm going to yeah. say weird flex to say you're on a cleanse, but all right. <laughs> I'm cleansing this my life. This is his from... lifestyle now. Yeah. He's, he's been oh, on a oh, juice oh, kick. Oh, it's a lifestyle. He's okay. been on a juice kick for like a month now. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. This last week, like two weeks last ago week, was the roughest. Th- this week, I just was fucking AKA, hey, he lost his chip two weeks ago. <laughs> what? It was a... Alcohol reference. Never mind. That I'm not it was an AA that. reference. I know, and I was like, that got dark. That got real dark, bro. <laughs> Alcoholism isn't funny unless you're like a, a a Falcons fan. But they won. They won tonight. There's obesity, but we joke about it every week. Yeah. <laughs> no, obesity's <laughs> funny. Like when you're fat, you can be funny. Like I said, if I lose, when I lose a hundred pounds. I lose like let's say two hundred pounds. I can't be the same type of asshole that I am with weight on me. Literally, I don't think I you can. would be. <laughs> <laughs> See? And that joke's not funny if I'm fit. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta have a little bit of imperfection in your life. Like, that's All right, okay. so Rantini, get to the football what, content. Which is kind of like this podcast. Yeah, so Just a little bit of imperfection. I, something I wanted to ask of you guys because it's it's been an ongoing, uh, an ongoing discussion in my own house and... Uh, just kind of asking around with friends. Um, I know it's something that uh, oh, Thomas Gallegos, friends. when oh, he ahead. first came on the show, <laughs> talked a little bit about it. He is just said we're not the friends. Issue of I'm just saying. He football. said he asked his friends. He never asked us. But go ahead. You don't hit the group chat with no I, football I talk. Gonna, I was going to ask my friends right now on our on our crossover episode. So there you go. <laughs> okay, Des caught it by the way. It, it it's called momentum. Anyway, uh, <laughs> with this being life in the year of covid and with all the lockdowns with everything that has gone on you know obviously football has you know i don't know what's kind of the best word to describe it it's clusterfuck been resuscitated to keep on going through the pandemic and i guess in getting to cover football what have you guys experienced in terms of issues or problems or just you know you know i don't know i guess you could call it coping with the fact that football is very different now under covid than it may have been before i guess have you guys experienced any kind of you know roadblocks of any kind or has it sort of been well first and foremost you know we kind of had a plan like this year we were really gonna try to do a lot of like on coverage on-site things and um, it was gonna be lit and so obviously with with no fans it makes it harder to have events it makes it harder to travel um, makes it harder to get in the press box, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, right out the get go, when the, the the pandemic happened, it already 
derailed our plans to go to the draft, to go to the to possibly go to the combine, and but for sure go to the draft. We were for sure going to go to the draft, even if we were just we're going to go there, just us. You know, we were going to go to I Vegas had, for the draft. The bread was already set aside, and so that didn't end up happening. The combine was already fifty fifty, but the pandemic definitely didn't help that. And then the XFL. The XFL, we were in the middle of covering, and that literally got stopped overnight. So that was a roadblock. And then, you know, if you follow the show, you know that, you know, we kind of go on a track of high school football occasionally from time to time. And we have still somewhat have done that, but it's been, hey, is high school football even going to exist? More so than like, hey, coach, how are you doing type of thing. So that's kind of changed the trajectory of things. In addition to that, I mean, it's also been harder to, like, really, really, really know, like, what what everything's going to look like. Because, well, like, sure, you know, if football stops tomorrow, Kenny and I can definitely talk for two hours and pull an episode out of our ass or, you know, talk to different interesting people around different interesting topics. Mm -hmm. Point being, like, yeah, the show will still go on. But it's hard to have like a roadmap when you don't know the the foundation of what you cover, what it's going to look like. Yeah. And again, back to the live events, like that USC UCLA tailgate. Oh, like the first one was dope. This one, shit was going to be outrageous. The live remotes, like we had a lot of momentum and I think it's kind of gone to different areas of our lives. Like we also like you got to remember. When this happened, then shortly after what George Floyd and then the lockdowns, the lockdowns changed the whole energy of the city. Like it felt yeah. like seeing cars, cop cars and big ass military jeeps go down my street late at night. Like I'm like, what, what the fuck? Where am I fucking living at right now? Like this isn't the Bolshevik re- revolution. Like what, what are we doing? What right is now? this Iraq? <laughs> this happens entirely too often. Anyway, <laughs> again, Stuart Griffin, you need to start like voice acting and pay for it. Like real shit. <laughs> just let me get 10% of the cut as your manager. <laughs> I pitch you as like the one dude who just goes to like black parties and with musicians and you just do voiceovers. You and David Blaine could just but, get together and do a set. Boy. But anyway, yeah, like the, it's kind of just the hard part because you have to like adjust your life as you're trying to adjust your career mm-hmm. and you're constantly like fine tuning to make sure things line up. But also like you're in a pandemic and the world's on fire. Yeah. So I think with anything, it's just like, it's not in a vacuum and that that's kind of what the show is. Is like, yeah, we do a football show, but like we actually have like regular lives too. And we're actually honest about that. We're not trying to put out a persona per se. You know, like we're not trying to be something that we're not. We're we're two people here trying to make it in Los Angeles. And we host a football show and we have cool friends. Like that's what the root of it is. So the good thing about it has been, you know, it is a lot of uncharted territory and it is like a good news peg to like, talk to players and talk to journalists like hey how are you doing like what's going on like how are you feeling like you know and that's one of our 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 things that we are planning coming up you know touching base with a lot of people a lot of the rookies that we kind of you know talk to at the senior bowl and the all-star games just you know whether or not they're on a roster or whatever you know just check in on them see how they're doing like you know are you still trying to make it like how's that going during the pandemic and so there's going to be more of that. And even, you know, once NFL wraps up, it's going to be fucking weird because high school is going to be starting right when college and NFL wrap up. So, I mean, that's going to give us a good opportunity to, you know, really follow high school a little bit more even and and see what that's going to be like playing football in the spring in full pads. Like, it's going to be weird, but... You know, we'll mm-hmm. we'll be here with, with takes and, and tangents about it. Yep. And cultural context. And of course we've also brought on, you know, two great interns. So that's also been a, a good part of the pandemic. Uh, and when you like <laughs> like we started out with four. <laughs> they're, like, they're the they're the last on the island. 
Yeah. <laughs> like shout out to shout out to the other two. They were you know they they had their their ways about it and they were dope. But it's and like serve. shout out to Sir. Oh wait, shout out to Sir. Sir's the intern coach. Yeah, shout out to Sir, yeah. And like it like I said, I found out last week that her dad was actually like the MVP quarterback of um Occidental College's football team in like nineteen eighty seven. So yeah, shout out to wow. Sir. But it's like when you bring in new people to the to what we're doing and we're trying to teach them and we're also like learning and growing in our own ways and then we're seeing how we can help them. It also feels good because it's like it's like we're passing on whatever we have to somebody else. Um, it's like it, we don't it, know how we're it's going to help them in life. But like the fact that they show up dedicated every week to this, mm-hmm. like all the respect in the I, world. I think at, at a time when a lot of people are, are looking for opportunity and trying to figure out what opportunity looks like. You know, with so much stuff uncertain, I think it's a real blessing to be able to give people an opportunity, you know, regardless of what they make of it or regardless of, you know, whatever, like just being able to to have something and extend that to somebody else, like it Mm -hmm. it makes it worth it. Warm to spirit. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean that's, that's excellent, and I think it's <laughs> you know it. It's certainly fascinating to see how you guys have progressed, and and really just how everyone has been able to kind of push through, even with you know whatever setbacks that COVID has provided. Um, now, something that I am curious to get your both you guys' thoughts on is the argument from. And this is an argument that I've heard many a time, uh, maybe even one too many times in my own house, about, you know, having football go on in the middle of a pandemic and the idea that, you know, if you kind of look at the history of the United States, at least basically the last hundred years or so when we've had national sports, you know, typically the idea has been, well, you know, this is kind of the reward of a fully functioning society. You know, this is basically a, a form of entertainment during a time when entertainment was blossoming. And obviously now you've got, you know, all the production companies are partially closed down. Um, and so you don't have as many movies coming out, at least, you know, you don't have really any theatrical releases yeah, and then on the flip side with football and really just with all sports in general, uh, Dodgers, um, Dodgers, you know, it's uh, it's kind of like what do you, what do you guys take of the idea that there shouldn't be uh, there shouldn't be any games of any kind right now because what about our society looks functional given both the pandemic and also the election and having a uh, fucking Cheeto in the White House, you know? I don't I dis- guess kind of what your take on it i don't disagree i mean i think you brought up a point like is our society really functioning right now but at the same time it's like i think and and Dana white said this at a conference that i went to but you know he was like you know uh, people really learned from the ufc like you know when they had that they said we're not shutting down then they had that first fight somebody tested positive and you know they got a lot of shit for it they're because they didn't shut the event down. They just you know isolated that one fighter, and the show went on. But that kind of showed the sports world that hey, you can have a positive test, and the show can still go on. You know, maybe not the same, but whatever the product that you're gonna put out, it's still gonna excite people, and it's still gonna mean something to people. And you know, even some of the guests that we've had on the show, and and you know, we we're serious about it. We're honest, like. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to laugh and joke and enjoy the fact that we do have football and it is kind of trash, like trash of like but it's fo- some oh. sense of normalcy. Exactly. Right. And you look at the fact that yeah, I was first person saying like how can you even have high school football? How can you justify like we still don't know all the covid cases? But you also got to remember sports is a feeder system. Like sports is 
It's a chain reaction. It's, it's, if you stop sports, you stop a lot of money. You stop children.